Good morning, grade 8 learners. Welcome to another episode of Valenzuela Live English Class. Nice to see you again. I hope that at this moment you are safe and still find learning enjoyable. We have to keep on being motivated and determined to finish what we have started. So, grab your pen, module, and notebook because you will be needing them as we go on with our discussion. Don't forget to check your gadget's battery and load. And before we proceed, let us check first the attendance. Key in or type the acronym of your school, dash, section, just like what you see on the screen. Everything is set. Let's get started. For today's session, we will be guided by this most essential learning competency. Explain visual-verbal relationship illustrated in tables, graphs, and information found in expository texts. While these are our specific objectives, sense the difference between linear and non-linear texts. Explain visual, verbal relationship illustrated in tables, graphs, and information maps found in expository texts. Interpret information found in nonlinear texts such as diagram, maps, charts, and others. We will utilize the alternative delivery mode module about visual verbal relationship in nonlinear text. This lesson will help you how to make meaning using nonlinear texts as presentation of people, objects, and places. I will take you on today's learning journey as we explore the different bit information presented on your alternative delivery mode or ADM. Some of the gray areas of the discussion will be tackled in your follow-up discussion. That is why you must attend your online follow-up discussion. This time, let's check your prior knowledge about the lesson that we are going to discuss today. I will give you five seconds to think about the answer for each item. Then, key in or type your answer in the comment box. Are you ready? Let's start. Fill in the missing letter of the words being described in each item. Number one. A type of text that uses a combination of words and images. The answer is non-linear. Number two, a type of graph that uses bars to present large changes or differences of data. The answer is bar graph. Number three, a type of chart that organizes ideas in a process. The correct answer is flowchart. Number four. In this nonlinear text, data are organized into columns and rows. Did you get the, did you get it right? The word is table. Number five. The total percentage of this graph is 100%. How about this? Did you get the correct answer? Yes, it's a pie graph. Did you get them all correct? Very good. That means you know the nonlinear taxes. If not, it means you need to listen very well to understand them better. For this lesson, 
we will discuss the linear and the nonlinear things. Let us have a glimpse on their difference for us to understand and help us to read the different kinds of texts. What is linear text? Linear text refers to traditional text that needs to be read from beginning to end. As readers of this text, we often observe the grammatical and syntactic arrangement of the words when we are reading it. This type of text has an order or sequence. The author decides the order of the text for its reading path. Examples of these texts are novels, poems, short stories, letters, and all those texts that we read from beginning to end. The linear text is the most common type of reading. It is the traditional type of reading we are taught as children. However, there are some disadvantages in reading linear text. One is that you cannot find some information quickly. This is because you need to read the entire text from beginning to end, and you have to spend some time before you get the specific information you need. Let us look at this example. Coronavirus disease, COVID-19, is an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered coronavirus. Most people who fall sick with COVID-19 will experience mild to moderate symptoms and recover without special treatment. How it spread? The virus that causes COVID-19 is mainly transmitted through droplets generated when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or exhales. These droplets are too heavy to hang in the air and quickly fall on floors or surfaces. You can be infected by breathing in the virus if you are within close proximity of someone who has COVID-19 or by touching a contaminated surface and then your nose, your eyes, or your mouth. Based on the given example, how did you go over the text? Did you read the entire text from beginning to end? Certainly to get the complete information and to understand the process of how the virus spreads. You need to read the entire text from beginning to end. This is an example of a linear text. This time, I would like you to read the COVID-19 monitoring report in Valenzuela as of 8 p.m. of November 9, 2021, and then Answer the question that follow. Number one, how many are the active cases as of 8 p.m. of November 9, 2021? If your answer is 97, good. How about the number of confirmed cases? 35,612. And the recovered cases are 34,694. How, how do we interpret the given report? The total number of confirmed cases is 35,612. Take away the number of recoveries, which is 34,694. The difference is 918. From 918, let us take away the number of deaths, which is 821. That makes the total number of active cases, which is 97. What kind of visual graph is presented? Do you consider this as an example of nonlinear text? What is a nonlinear text? Nonlinear text is the opposite of linear text. As its name suggests, it is nonlinear and non-sequential. In other words, the readers do not have to go through the text in a sequential manner in order to make sense of the text. This type of text has many reading paths, 
since it's the reader who decides the sequence of reading, not the author or the text. There are many definitions of nonlinear text. Most people consider texts with visuals or graphs along with them as an example of nonlinear texts. Some examples include flowcharts, charts, and graphs. Example, pie chart, bars, graphical organizer such as knowledge map, and story maps. In fact, any text that is not read from beginning to end falls into the category of nonlinear text. Let us have a quick walk through the different examples of nonlinear text. Line graph. It is a common type of chart which display information such as series of data points connected by a straight line segment to show trends. Bar graph. It is a common type of chart that presents data with rectangular bars that differ in their sizes. It is usually scaled so all the data could fit on the chart. A bar graph shows a specific quantity. It's good for presenting direct comparison over time, year by year. It is used to present numerical information. It can be used to focus on one variable or to compare variables. Pie graph. A circular chart which is divided into slices or portion to utilize or illustrate proportions. It shows the relationship of parts to the whole. It comprises many segments, percentage, and total. The purpose of this graph is to help viewers compare one segment to another segment and to the whole, as Wilkinson, 1999. Histogram. It shows gra graphical distribution of numerical data. It has no gaps between the parts. Graphic organizers. It is also called as a concept, knowledge, story map. Cognitive organizers, cluster webs, advanced organizers, or concept diagrams. It is a communication tool that uses visual symbols to express knowledge, concept, or thoughts, and the relationship between them. Venn diagram. It is a diagram that shows all possible logical relationships between a set of items. It comprises two overlapping circles. Infographic. It is a collection of striking, colorful, and engaging visuals or imagery charts with minimal text that gives an easy-to-understand overview of a topic. The information conveyed is easier and clearer, clearer to understand. Now, let's try to read and compare two texts. Mask, face shields, distancing, cut COVID-19 spread by 99%, the OPR, by Raymond Carden. Manila, the Department of Transportation, is said wearing face shields and face masks and keeping a one meter distance between other persons effectively reduced the transmission of the coronavirus disease or COVID-19 in public transportation by as much as 99%. In a Facebook post on Thursday, the DOPR said, that the data were based on 2020 study attributed to Dance, Herrera, and others that measures the estimated risk reduction of contracting COVID-19 per intervention, wearing masks, face shield, and physical distancing. Compared to the 99% reduction in risk of transmission, it is said wearing a mask and shield would only result in a 93% reduction. 
one meter distance and wearing a face mask and 94% reduction. Meanwhile, observing two meter distance and wearing a face mask and 97% reduction of virus transmission. Take a look at this one. It says that the estimated risk reduction of contracting for COVID-19 for intervention, wearing masks, face shields, and physical distancing is 99%. Wearing a mask and shield would only result into a 93%. Observing a 2-meter distance and wearing a mask result into a 97% reduction. One meter distance and wearing a face mask and 94% reduction. Now, let us see how a short story, an example of a linear text, is transposed to a non-linear text. Are you familiar with Alibaba and the 40 Thieves stories? Read along with me. Alibaba and the 40 Thieves Alibaba, a poor woodcutter, was in the forest when he saw 40 thieves up in the front of a cave. The leader said, Open sesame! And before Alibaba's amazed eyes, the sealed mouth of the cave magically opened and the men disappeared inside. To come out and close the entrance, the leader said, Close sesame! And the cave sealed it at itself at once more. Trembling with excitement, Alibaba waited till the thieves had left and then entered the cave after saying the magical words. To his delight, he found a lot of treasures. Alibaba told his brother, Kasim, about the wondrous cave. Kasim set off to get some treasure for himself too. Sadly, he forgot the words to leave the cave and the thief kills him. Alibaba discovered his brother's body in the cave. With the help of a slave girl called Morgiana, he was able to take Kasim's body back home and bury it. Realizing that someone else knew about their cave, the thieves tracked Alibaba down. The leader, disguised as an oil seller, stayed with Alibaba. He had brought along mules loaded with 40 oil jars containing the other thieves. Clever Morgiana knew who the oil seller really was and poured boiling oil into the jars, killing the 40 thieves. While dancing in front of the leader of the thieves, Morgiana stabbed him. Alibaba was saved and lived happily ever after. As you can see, this text shows a series of events. Can you think of a nonlinear text appropriate to use in this kind of text? Are you thinking of a graphic organizer for this? A flowchart, perhaps. Then, you are right. Take a look at the story presented use, using a flowchart. This flowchart shows the sequential order of events that took place in the story. Here, you can easily identify what happened before and after an event. Let's say what happened when the leader of the thieves killed Alibaba's brother. Look at the flowchart. You can easily and quickly answer my question. And the answer is, the leader disguised as an oil cell stayed with Alibaba and brought the 40 thieves along with him. Too easy, right? Rather than reading the entire text from beginning to end. Upon reading the two texts, which is easier to understand, 
the linear or the nonlinear text. Let us try to compare the linear and nonlinear text using a table. Linear text, traditional text that needs to be read from beginning to end. The nonlinear text, the text does not need to be read from beginning to end. The linear text has one reading path decided by the author. The nonlinear text has multiple reading paths determined by the reader. The linear text includes printed texts. Nonlinear text includes digital texts. Linear text takes time to find information. Nonlinear text finds information with efficiency. Linear text examples are novels, poems, letters, textbooks, newspapers, and articles. Nonlinear text examples are flowchart, knowledge maps, and encyclopedia. To sum up what we have discussed today, we learned that visual presentations enable students to summarize, exemplify, and illustrate the ideas presented in a text by Mac Donough, 1980. Charts and graphs are visual presentation of information that shows the relationship between two or more things. Charts and graphs are quick and easy to read. We also learned that a linear text is the most common type of text. It needs to be read from start to end. The focus are grammar and style. Nonlinear texts are visuals to assist the reader to capture the meaning. To check if you understood the lesson about the nonlinear text, bring out your notebook and pen. Let us answer these questions. You have five seconds to answer each item. Now, for this activity, part one, you are asked to rearrange the letter based on the given meaning. Ready? Let's start. Number one. A set of facts of figures systematically displayed, especially in columns. Number two, pictorial representation or a diagram that presents data or values in an organized manner. Number three, diagram in which the numerical values of variables are presented or represented by the height or length of lines of rectangular or equal width. Number four, a sheet of information in the form of a table, graph, or diagram. Number five, it is a collection of striking, colorful, and engaging visuals or imagery, charts with minimal text that gives an easy-to-understand overview of a topic. For part two, interpreting pie or circle graph. Type or key in your answer in the comment box as they appear in the graph. Number one. Tina spends the largest portion of her income on land. Number two. Tina spends the least amount of every month on land. Number three, Tina spends blank of her monthly income on clothing. Number 
Number four, the percentage of her income that Tina spend, spends each month on the bus fare and other expenses combined equals to she spends on blank. Number five, what is the title of the given pie graph? Let us check your answers. For part one, number one, it's table. Two, graph. Three, bar graph. Four, chart. Five, infograph. For part two, number one, rent. Two, bus fare. Number three, 12%. Number four, utilities. And number five, Tina's monthly living expense. So, who got 10 out of 10 correct answers? You're doing great. For those who did not, don't you worry. There is always room for improvement. Just keep on learning. Now that you have some questions, I know that you have some questions in mind during the discussion. Feel free to type the in your questions in the comment box. I'm giving you a minute to do that. And your time starts now. Time's up. Let me read the first question from Malandai National High School. The question is, what is the importance of using graphs, tables, and illustration if we can use texts instead? Using graphs, tables, and charts provides some benefits. First, it quickly provides information related to trends and comparisons of the data. It also allows some readers who may be less versed in numerical analysis to follow the information and fully understand the presentation. Secondly, graphs and chart provides a visual version of data, which can be helpful for visual learners. However, these benefits are balanced by disadvantages. The major disadvantage of using charts and graphs is that these aids may oversimplify data, which can provide a misleading view of the data. Attempting to correct this can make charts overly complex, which can make their value in aiding presentation less useful. Finally, it is important to use the correct chart and or graph when presenting information. Through this, through this a difficult, difficult to be an identified or ambiguous data. Let us move on to the next question from Paso de Blas National High School. The question is, can we consider all written texts as linear texts? To answer that question, let us have a short recap of the definition of linear and nonlinear text. Linear text is the most common type that needs to be read from beginning to the end. That is why it is considered sequential. 
Nonlinear text, on the other hand, is the opposite, as its name suggests. It is non-sequential. In other words, the readers do not have to go through from the beginning to end in order to make sense of the text. With that definition, we can say that not all texts can be considered linear. In fact, any text that is not read from beginning to the end falls under non-linear. For example, consider an encyclopedia or a telephone directory. We do not read them from the beginning to end. We skim through them to get the specific information we need. And the last question is from Parada National High School. And it says, what is the importance of learning the linear and non-linear texts for us learners? Brilliant question. One of the important aspects of our education today, it encourages learners to understand the way media shape your world. And most of the texts today can be considered multimodal texts as they combine visuals, audio, and linguistic texts. Learning to read the different types of texts and kind of texts provide an access to read a more complicated and complex texts and that you encounter in a saturated media life. This time, let me give you the directions that you need to do in your module. Under what's more, activity one, check the label. You need to identify the nonlinear text presented. Activity two, A and B, beyond the label. You need to study the given table and answer the questions that follow. Under what I can do, you are asked to study the given nonlinear text and write three paragraph composition about the content of the infographic. And for the assessment, you are asked to identify whether the statement is true or false. I hope that everything is clear. Let us all pray that this pandemic will end soon. While we are waiting for it to end, Education must not waste. Let us continue to support the effort of the city government of Valenzuela and the deaf at Valenzuela's better plan. And my next situation to loyal education. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed and let's all be safe. See you again.